Okay, so expecting, and we are recording. Okay. okay. This is Miriam Raftery with East County Magazine and the East County Magazine radio show. We'll be airing this on KNSJ. And my very special guest today is Joel Scalzidi, who is the president of the Helix Water Board. He's running for re-election in District 5. He's one of four candidates. District 5 includes, uh, I understand, portions of El Cajon, Granite Hills, Bostonia, Lakeside. Is there more, Joel? Did I get it? Yeah, that's okay. about accurate. And, and okay. actually, I'm not president right now, um, but... Oh, okay. I was going off your bio, past president then. Past president, yeah. Thank you. He's been on the board for over 10 years. He owns several local businesses, including a water service company for freeway construction, a delicatessen in El Cajon, and Mary's Donut Shop, which has great donuts out in Lakeside. Yeah. He's also a member of the San Diego County Water Authority Board and the Advanced Water Purification Board. He's served on several district committees, including the Audit Committee, Water Quality and Resources Committee, and a Committee on Parks. And he helped lead efforts to keep the Lake Jennings Campground open, which was a, a great thing. So Joel, thanks for joining uh, us today. Thank you, thanks for having me. So I'd like you, if you could, to start, since you're the incumbent, by telling us what you consider your most in important accomplishments or achievements in your decade on the board. Uh, well, you know, it's, um it's it's more longevity you know you get to you get on the board and there's people that have been on there a long time uh, they're not really ready to digest some of your ideas so you've got to kind of um uh, play long learn their style and try to you know see where you can uh, uh input your some of your ideas where they're going to be digested and i think that's a, a mistake that some people have they think they're going to come in here and change the world um, and reality is, is this year, there's a lot of learning to do and, yeah. and, 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 and respect to be earned and then try to implement some of the ideas and things that you think that can be more efficient and better. And I think that's what I've, I've prized myself on the last 10 years. Um, you know, it's just not going in there and, and changing the world, but um, right. really getting in there, learn a system, figure out how to be effective. And, um, right. and, and, and I pride myself on being a good listener. And I think that's part of it. You know, when I was young, younger, getting into the workforce, I was a barber and, and you had to be a good listener being a barber, you know, and people come in, they, they sit down and they say, I want it, I want, you know, short through here and I want this much on top. And, and, and you really got to listen to them because that's what they're looking for. They want something that you're going to give them and they, they want it their way. And, and, and the better listener you are, the more effective that you can be, you can understand people. Yeah, there you go. I should mention, by the way, there is one other seat up this election, but I believe the incumbent is running unopposed. Is that right? So this is the only uh, seat, you know, that is, um, that's a competitive seat. Um, no, there's 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 two there's three seats oh. up. One is one is not um, opposed, and then the other one there's uh, somebody running again uh, against okay. Dan Millen. Dan oh, okay. Millen I need to look at that. I believe Mark Grasick is one. running unopposed. So yeah. Oh, okay, my my correction on that. Then sorry. Um, tell me about what your goals are if you're reelected, understanding that, of course, you're only one of five board members, although it sounds like there's at least a possibility one seat could change if, since there's a competitive race there. Um, what what do you see, foresee ahead for the next four years in the Helix Water District? Well, I think uh, progressing some of the things that we've already done, uh, but making them more efficient. You know, the uh, I pride myself on the Lake Jennings and uh, turning it around, they wanted to shut it down and yeah. um, just uh, doing some things uh, differently. And they didn't give me any new budget to see if I can, you know, get it into the green. We had to do things without new money or more money. So um, we did just simple things like bigger fish instead of smaller fish, which the birds and the other fish didn't eat. So and then the anglers would catch bigger fish and then there was a little buzz that went on. So just little, doing little things differently. Yeah, bringing in TVs and, and canoes. I remember the fun. Yeah, stuff. so we're doing things with really low payback, and and we can make a profit and 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 kind of pay us back right away. And and so now next uh, next year we're going to be uh, we're looking at right now some designs to to put some money into the park and um, kind of upgrade the sites and some sewer oh, nice. systems and electrical. And um, this is not going to be ratepayer money. It's 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 assets that we sold. And we're going to take those assets and fix other assets. So it won't, it won't affect the rate or won't affect the people. But I think that's um, is what my goal is, is to see that through where we're going to um, 
uh, invest in this in in the Lake Jennings, mm -hmm. that it'll be more stable for for decades to come, not just a, a couple of years. But we've been in a positive now for I would say four years or something like that. I mean, it's really kind of a neat thing. That's great. That is good. My next question is how the pandemic has impacted the district's budget, and do you foresee any changes ahead because of that that would impact the uh, the ratepayers or the employees, for that matter? You know, um, obviously in the beginning it it was an unknown, so people are staying home. Um, some people are, you know, we were kind of slowed down on on the workforce, but um, I think people have really um, and uh, kind of. Um, took on the change. And so we're doing a lot of Zoom meetings. I know our construction crews are doing Zoom meetings. So not necessarily that our crews have to go into the to the operations center to have a meeting and now they're out of the job site and they're Zooming with the other construction crews on the other side. So, um, you know, just adapting to the change and taking it in. Uh, change isn't always popular, but sometimes when you embrace it, um, it, it is more efficient. And I think that's what um, I, I, our agency has done. Um, I, I was against a lot of these Zoom meetings for our board meetings, but um, it, they're, they're not so bad. It, 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 gives, it gives some of the other um, people to be more prepared and, and actually sit at their desk and have some of the information that they can't have right in the boardroom. So there's a lot of good yeah. things that, that came up with, with some of this, this stuff. And I, and I think that um, as we embrace some of the change and not just fight against it, that it, yeah. it'll help us. But we do like to get back into the boardroom. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I have a question later on the Zoom, the Zoom era of Zoom, but we'll, we'll get to that one. Yeah. Uh, water rates, of course, are always the top issue in water district races, I think, through the years. Can you tell us how successful you, you've been at trying to hold down rates, which is always what the voters usually want? And should the public, understanding that, of course, it's contingent on a lot of factors that, you know, such as the price coming into the water district and drought and everything else. And also, do you think that the public should be able to weigh in at hearings annual, annually or whenever a rate change is proposed? I remember a few years ago, the board majority went to uh, every five years and there was some, some controversy over that. Um, what are your feelings about that? And what do you foresee looking in your crystal ball uh, for rates in the future? So I guess that's kind of a three-part question. The record yeah, that's a loaded rates, question there. What's gonna happen within um, the future? Well, and should it be every year? You know, um... Just to touch in on some of uh, what where I feel like uh, the rates are, and, and I'm really sensitive about the rates. Um, obviously, um, you know our rates continue to to increase every year, and and for sometimes there are droughts that, and then some are re restrictions that the state puts on us, and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, this year, you know, it was a pandemic. People are having troubles, and and they're not being able to pay their water bill. They're not paying, being able to pay some of their other bills. And, and it was a big, it was a big worry. And I led the charge just saying, hey, you know, um, you know, our water district is, is pretty stable and we do a pretty good job at, at um, being stable, uh, probably one of the most stable in the county, but we set ourselves up for emergency times in, in certain things. And I said, hey, if, if there's ever an emergency, if we saved up for that rainy day yeah. that we had a bad day, it's this year. And so I think that we should not raise the rates this year. We should have substantial um, reserves. And, and we've set ourselves up because if there was a year like this, and this is the year, I said, so I led the charge not to have any rate increase this year. It was the first one I've ever heard of. And I've tried to get information if there's one been in the past, but every year Helix traditionally likes to to increase a little bit instead of having large spikes. But yeah. I said, you know, this year is the year that we're not, we're gonna go without a rate increase and let's see how we affect, how what the effects take on us. Let's see how we can keep to a budget with our operations and see where we can keep budget to our waters and, you know, uh, water purchases and whatnot. And so um, since then, I, I uh, some of my colleagues agree with me. Actually, um, at the end, there was a unanimous vote and we did not increase the water rates this year. I was wow. really super proud of that. And, um, and and our, our staff is really adapting to it. So uh, I'm hoping that that they're prepared for more of this in the future because you know it, it just doesn't mean that we have to raise it every year just because. And, yeah, and I, you know, that's a good point. And, 
And like I was saying in the beginning, it's you can't charge in here and say no rate increase and no this and that, but really learn the system. And now this is actually a good way to say, hey, can we stretch ourselves this year and not do a rate increase? And how's it going to affect us next year? Do we have to raise again a little bit? And can we not raise the next year? You know, I'd really yeah. like to see where we can stretch and how we can be a little bit more efficient. And I think this year has been um, a really uh, an eye opener to say we had no rate increase and let's yeah. see how it affects us. Yeah, well, I'm sure all the people out there that are out of work or struggling with less, less income in their businesses, you know, appreciate that. Um, another water issue that I've heard come up from time to time in the district is, as far as I know, uh, I, my understanding is that Helix is still assessing water based on, uh, yeah, if you can mute that, based on uh, water usage, uh, you know, obviously encouraging people to conserve, while some other districts like Padre Dam, um, they also look at factors like family size and lot size. In other words, so that somebody with a, a big family or a large lot where, you, where you're trying to keep the trees alive and not create you know, brush fire hazards isn't penalized if they're attempting to conserve, but there's only so far you, know, you can go with that. Do you think the current system should be retained or do you support maybe taking a look at some of those other things? You know, I, I, do, I do not like the tiered system as much as is it makes sense for, for the staff. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I have a large lot and I have um, an, uh, another dwelling on my property as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a higher water bill because, and, and they look at mine was, oh, here's the director and he uses this much water, but I have I have the other family that lives on my lot with me. Mm -hmm. We share a water meter. So, and yeah. I have an acre, an acre. So I get, I get hit pretty hard that Lincoln, like mm -hmm. I'm a large water user. But the reality is, is that, um, we're in the business to sell water. I mean, that's the water authority. I mean, the water uh, district Helix uh, creates revenue off this water sales. And if we don't sell enough water on these water sales, then we don't have enough in the budget to, to, to pay for, or the revenue to pay for some of the, um, the commitments that we had, such as um, retirement and-, and, and Yeah, uh, it's, and, it's, and it's so an ironic that, situation in that you want people to conserve because it's the right thing to do. And yet if people conserve too much, then there's not enough income coming in for the district. So how do you resolve that and be get, fair? And then they raise the rate, they get all mad because they're like, listen, I've done everything I can, I've, uh, I've conserved, right. and now you're raising my rate. Well, uh, I'm a believer in we should use water, as much water as we want to use, but we should not waste water. And I think that should be the new, the, the new message that goes out is use as much water as you want, but just don't waste water. And I think if we live by that motto, um, we'll do a lot better. Mm -hmm. and, and if we can change. So what the future, about the, there, the issue of large families or larger the, lots? Should everybody be charged, you know, the same rate, no matter how many yeah. people are in your family or how big your lot is? Or I think, I think that's coming in the future. Our, our system and not only Helix, but um, the Southern California is moving to more of a fixed charge. And, and, and instead of more of a, a usage charge, mm -hmm. the usage charge is gonna shrink and, and the fixed charge are coming. And it's just inevitable for, for the, the amount of um, infrastructure that we're putting in, in the ground and, and, and constantly rehabilitating and maintenance. Okay. It, and it's gonna affect our fixed charges. So our yeah. fixed charges are gonna be going up and hopefully our, our usage is, is gonna take a different type of a tier. And that's all coming in the next couple of years. We are seeing hotter, drier conditions across the West, what scientists would call climate change, uh, whatever we call it, we're certainly seeing the effects of it here locally. What more, Joel, can be done to assure that our region will continue to have a clean and stable supply of water going forward? Well, I think that we've been working on that for years and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on our own local supply here with Padre Dan in the city of uh, El Cajon in the county of San Diego. And we're trying to create our own local East County supply with the uh, advanced water treatment program. So yeah. uh, I sit on that, that board as well. Um, Which is basically water recycling, right? Uh, it's water recycling taken to a, a newer and, and, and next level. Um, yeah, I've seen them, you know, brewing the beer out of it and drinking it and to show how yeah. clean it is. So uh, that's been a long time coming and um, the regulations uh, took a long time to get and they're still kind of learning and they're they're kind of watching us because we've had our scientists and, and people out there uh, working really hard at implementing some regulations as well. And so um, we're gonna have the probably, I think the first water uh, 
the water reservoir augmentation here in the county uh, in next two or three years. And, and, and it's exciting. It, there's been a lot of work put into it to uh, have our own local supply, supply drought proof. Obviously, um, the city of San Diego is doing one on a much larger scale. I, but I think that um, it's so hard for an agency that size to get these big things done. So uh, I think that we're going to be leading the uh, leading the way and getting our project up online first, which is really exciting. And, and it's been my passion. Uh, I, I've, you know, you know, in the past I've ran for other offices uh, right. for, for mayor of El Cajon. Uh, yeah. That was my passion then is to make sure that the city of El Cajon uh, was, was in this program that that was 100 percent in in taking some of their wastewater and stripping it down there and um, mm -hmm. taking it from going out into the ocean and actually recycling it. So I'm glad that they're on board. Um, but uh, this this uh, AWP has been my passion uh, since I got on the board. Very good. Thank you. And we, we've heard a bit about some other areas where there have been efforts to divert water from certain districts, shift them to other areas. Do you think the water that belongs to Helix Water District's customers should stay in this district if another county or a city were to seek to buy our water if we had a good year, lots of rain, you know? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, obviously, we like to keep as much water as, uh, as we can, especially if it's our water, local water. Uh, Helix Water District owns two reservoirs, which is Cuyamaca Lake up in uh, Julian okay. and in Cuyamaca Mountains and uh, Lake Jennings. So we uh, we pride ourselves at buying water uh, in the wintertime when there's an excess amount of it and we store it in the lake, Lake Jennings, and then we can draw it down and use it during the summer when it's high demand and the, and the peaks up. So we do, uh, we have those assets and, and fortunately we do, a lot of other districts don't. So they have to, um, you know, kind of pass that cost on to their um, to the rate payers, which is um, w which is not always pleasant. But we have some uh, we have some some reservoirs and some uh, infrastructure that we're it's lucky we can kind of do those things for our rate payers. It saves them a lot of money. Yeah, that's good. We talked a little bit about the era of Zoom now, where your district and some others are um, holding meetings virtually. Some of them are providing really ac easy access to the meetings and recordings online. Some others have been far less transparent. A few of them have been downright murky about it. I haven't really checked into, into the Helix one yet, um, but I wanted to ask you how accessible those live meetings and also the recordings of the Zoom meetings are. And um, I'm curious, once the COVID era is over and, and the restrictions on gatherings, do you think that when the district goes back to in-person meetings that they should continue to live stream them so people can watch from home and, and should they have videos, you know, how long should videos, it, should videos be available on the website and, and if so, for how long? You know, it's a great question. Um, like I was saying before, you know, we're all kind of trying to adapt, but I, I think it's gonna come, you know, we're getting so much better at these Zoom things. There'll mm -hmm. be kind of a standard pretty soon. And I hope that there's a yeah. standard that everybody can live up to that, that certain standard and then right. it'll be a normal practice. So um, although I'm pretty anxious to get back into the, the boardroom and, and, and sit in front of my colleagues to, to, um, yeah. to conversate and, um, and uh, network and, and talk to uh, right in front of each other, uh, it, we are going to be missing some of these things that maybe people can catch on their way home or at work when they're stuck at work, they can't go to the meetings, but they can turn it on right there. So um, I think that I'm hoping that there'll be a certain standard and, may, and maybe we can do one or two meetings a month where uh, we can still do Zoom so, so the public can access and uh, easily do it because it is getting a lot more convenient and I'm just waiting for the certain standard that everybody kind of follows. So yeah. everybody will have the same kind of access. Yeah, it also, another advantage of it is, it is it makes it really easy to do the recordings. I mean, even in a standard meeting, it, it's just not that hard to do if everybody's got even a, a, a little tablet or something like that. Um, it makes the recording very easy. You just hit record like I just did for this one. And then anybody can be watching it anywhere. If you put it on Facebook, it could be live. But also just to put a taped version, a lot of, I know local boards before this, all you had were audio recordings. Some of them you'd have to drive to their office to pick it up or pay to get a CD, which was a, a pain. 
Yeah. And with this, you simply ask, can I download the recording? And maybe there's a nice button right on the site and they keep them up there for a year or so. And it's just yeah. so easy. I mean, for me as media, but I think for the public too, a lot of people work, they can't make those board meetings. Even if they did, they may want to listen to it again and make sure they're, you know, quoting somebody correctly or remembering something correctly. Um, so, you know, it'd be nice to see those retained for as long as they can. Yeah. And like I said, hopefully there'll be a standard that everybody kind of follows the same thing and it'll be just a norm. Yeah, that would be great. Well, Joel, we've kind of gone through all the specific questions that I had. I just wanted to ask if there's anything else that you would like the public to know about your candidacy or any endorsements you may have and also where they can get more information about you. Um, well, I first of all, just to start off, like, um, I'm just a, a regular person like my neighbors. I got elected to represent my neighbors and, and people in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm a really hardworking businessman here in our community. Um, I, I do a lot with the community. I, I help a lot with the uh, local schools and local law enforcement. Um, I, I sit on the chamber board of the Chamber of Commerce uh, here in Lakeside. I'm on that cha Chamber of Lakeside board of directors. Um, public service is my passion. Uh, I, I, I got into it. Um, uh, just kind of being a pulse on the community. Like I said, I was a barber early on in my life and it kind of taught me to like listen and, 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 and hear what the people in the public are saying when they come in. But um, my, my goal is that I make a better place for my kids and then their kids. And uh, that's kind of my passion. If I can put a little time into that and make sure that, that they're thought of not only just right now, but in years to come for them and their kids and their kids. And uh, that's my passion, that's why I'm here. So um, uh, like I said, I own a couple of small little businesses. We work really, really hard, um, but uh, I enjoy my community and I, I really enjoy uh, public service. Very good. Well, I just wanna thank you so much for joining us today and to remind all of our viewers and listeners that we will be posting this interview on eastcountymagazine.org. Uh, and on YouTube and Facebook and just about everywhere else. And just to remember that if you haven't already voted, if you didn't get your abs your vote by mail ballot, you know, request it. You can drop it off at libraries, lots of places, vote at the poll or drop it off early. And they, they even have a, a drive up one now at the registrar. If you want contactless voting in person, uh, you can do that too. So Joel, thanks so much for taking the time to join us on East County Magazine. Thanks, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you and what you do. And uh, I appreciate you putting all these this information, even uh, my other opponents out there. So people really know who's who's doing what in our community and it really helps. So I appreciate yeah. you. What you do. Yeah, we did interview one, uh, Vicki Butcher who reached out to us and uh, the other two, we couldn't find websites for, they didn't have yeah. ballot statements. So I'm not sure yeah. how serious they are, but we're really pleased that we were able to get, looks like the two, you know, uh, serious contenders uh, to do interviews. And listeners, if you go in our politics section on East County Magazine, you can also find interviews for a lot of the other top races going on across yeah. San Diego's East County. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.